It is time now for Bait Man Raw. This is episode two, and I want to thank Ben Milliken very much for joining me last week on Bait Man Raw. It was a good time, and I'm very glad that you guys, as YouTube subscribers and Facebook followers, Instagram followers, that y'all really enjoyed Bait Man Raw. So we're going to do another episode this week, and I've got a special guest again. Mr. Low Budget, I'm not Dunkin' Donuts, but Luke Duncan is joining me. And if you don't listen or watch Low Budget Live, you're missing out. Dude is just like me. I mean, Luke's just, just a country boy. He likes to fish. He likes to talk. And he's got an opinion. And I dig it. I totally dig it. You know, and he's a ball fan, guys. So, me, I love my ball brothers. I love my fishing brothers, so it's going to be a good time today. But before we get on with Luke, we're going to talk about a few things that's been on my mind and, and going in on the news lately. Uh, before I get into that, let me let you guys know, Six Cents Fishing is running some awesome sales right now. They're doing a 12 days of Christmas. Every day there's a different sale on things from apparel to soft plastics to hard baits to the rods just got to check the website every day. Make sure you sign up on that newsletter. Um, heads up, they have got a ton of new colors and soft plastics available. The prawn is back in stock. Rumor has it the new stroker craw is fixing to go up on the website. That thing is, is awesome. It's super versatile. You can use it on a swim jig. You can use it on a football jig. You can use it by yourself. You can punch mats with it. Really Really good stuff coming from Six Cents, and man, the new colors are awesome. Uh, check out that bluegrass color, uh, Divine Shaky Worm. If you like Magic Crawl, if you like a watermelon blue, that's kind of a mix of both. Man, it's it, it's really, really nice. And, and Casey and all those guys have really hit it out of the park, and they got even more stuff coming for 2020. Uh, they're not changing the game. They're just changing how you play it, but... Uh, Anytime you're on Six Cents website and you feel like making a purchase, use that code BAITMAN. That gets you 10% off. And uh, we're going to ask Luke Duke, Duncan what his favorite baits are because I know he's a big Six Cents guy. He's been with them for quite a while now. But let's get into a little uh, bit of news. And breaking this morning, FLW released their new Pro Circuit roster. You know, they lost some guys. And, you know, Brian Thrift, uh, who is probably one of the most insane fishermen on this planet, is went to the BPT, the Bass Pro Tour, fishing Major League Fishing. Uh, I think it sets up really, really well for him. Somebody made the comment, well, he's an offshore fisherman. Uh, he kind of is, but the dude can scratch and claw a limit almost anywhere. Whether it's around boat docks at Hartwell, in the grass at Okeechobee, uh, he's done it on Kentucky Lake offshore. He's done it at the Ozarks. The dude can catch him. I mean, I'm going to give Thrift all the credit in the world. And I've said it before. He can fish any derby anywhere, and he's no worse than a 3-4-1 to four to one dog. I mean, he, he's the kind of guy that he's your always your safe bet. He's going to cash a check. And, I man, when Thrift gets a lead, he smells blood, and he keeps going. And he's kind of... You know, I would refer to him as kind of like the intimidator, the Dale Earnhardt, because if you're leading a tournament and thrifts behind you in second, third place, you, you kind of wonder, oh, what's this guy doing? Is thrift catching him? Oh, man, man, he keeps, he, he's been weighing more and more every day. That That's kind of intimidating. That's the old school KVD factor. You know, when Van Dam was fishing a tournament, he didn't have to be in the lead to beat you. He just had to be right behind you and, you know, I'd hate to be fishing Major League Fishing and knowing Thrift's in my group. And that score tracker just keeps going off and off. Thrift's got another one. Thrift's got another one. Thrift's got another one. Whew. Scary times over there, boys. It's, it's going to be fun to watch that and, and the adjustment. And David Dudley's going uh, to the Bass Pro Tour as well. And I think Dudley is a very underrated fisherman. He's won a ton of money. And, He's kind of known as an off-the-wall guy as far as techniques and stuff like that. And you just watch some of the stuff on his YouTube channel. He has some great ideas, of bait customization uh, for guys. But Dudley's been around. He's a hammer. He could go fish bass uh, as well. 
but he's going to run the Bass Pro Tour next year. But let's not write off FLW. There is awesome uh, anglers still fishing on the tour. John Cox is fishing, former FLW Cup champion. Uh, Brad Knight still fishing. Uh, Brad won the Forest Wood Cup. Great fisherman. Very versatile fisherman as well. You got Jeremy Lawyer. You don't hear about him a whole lot, but he is a hammer. He's from Missouri. He won the All-American. Um, also, Terry Bolton Jr., good friend of mine. He's back again. Terry got his first win last year, and uh, I was very, very happy for him. Doing something he liked, throwing a spinnerbait and a crank bait. Uh, Greg Bohannon, Chad Grigsby are back. And there's some new faces coming in, and it looks like you're living the dream winner, Preston Craig. Um, he's going to be fishing on the FLW tour. So kudos for to FLW Major League Fishing for making that right and getting him in there. Um, I'd like to see that guy uh, have a really good run just for everything he's went through and the hard work he put in to uh, make a dream uh, fishing there through the TBF. But there are some newcomers, and I'm looking down uh, through the list here. And there's one guy I really want to point out. And I want you guys to remember this name. His name is Cole Floyd. Cole Floyd has been on ESPN numerous times in the Bassmaster College Series. Almost qualified for the Classic from Bethel University. You know, that's about an hour and a half to two hours for me. And Cole is without a doubt one of the most natural talented fishermen out there. He can flip, he can fish offshore, he can fish vertically, but he puts in the work and he can find fish. And not just on the Tennessee River. He's done it in Florida, he's done it in East Tennessee, Alabama. He's a dang good stick. And I value the opinion of Many of my friends and, and my good friend Brent Anderson, who's qualified for All-American several times, said Cole is, he's the one. He's got the it factor. And uh, my other buddy, Jake Lawrence, which you've seen Jake on my YouTube channel, I feel like Jake is one of the most gifted anglers I've ever been in the boat with. When he says Cole's got it, I'll listen to it. But you've got some other good guys uh, coming in to the FLW Tour uh, as well. Uh, Cody Nichols, he's a guy to watch for. He's from Alabama. He, he's a hammer down there on Gunnersville and Pickwick and, and the Tom Bigby uh, waterway. He's a shallow fisherman, but he can fish offshore. Uh, let's see who else is in, in, in the tour this year. Um, just scrolling a little bitty list. You know, Larry Nixon's coming back. Kerry Milner, he's an old school guy. He, he's a good fisherman too. Kurt Mitchell's coming back. Johnny McCombs, a really underrated fisherman. Um, Johnny's had some great success on the FLW tour. John Hunter fishing as well. Um, there's a really good list of guys. Dylan Hayes, you know, Dylan just won uh, a Costa event, well, which was the Costa event. So he's riding some good momentum. Great to offshore fisherman, knows those Ozark style lakes very well. Um, I will tell you though, Dylan, the wiggle wart is overrated. Um, Josh Douglas, I mean, there's a lot of guys in here. Alex Davis. Uh, Jason Christie's fishing. Uh, let me tell you, that's not the Jason Christie for Major League Fishing. That is the other Jason Christie. Won't worry too much about him. But um, Clayton Botts is fishing. Excellent angler, angler as well. Ramey Colson Jr., another guy close to me. So FLW still has some great anglers. And I think it's time to, to end the... Well, FLW anglers aren't as good as Bassmaster guys. Uh, guess who won the Angler of the Year last year over on the Bassmaster Elite Series? Yeah, that's right. Former FLW Tour Pro, Scott Canterbury, my good buddy. He's all roll tied. I like to give him a little crap, but he is a good dude. And I text him after, and uh, he texts me back. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, Scott, if you get to listen to this, you know, I you're one of the reasons I followed the late series last year. You're a great fisherman and good dude. And I really respect how you do things on and off the water. Just a good dude. And, uh, you know, Scott fished his strengths. And you saw him catch him fish on a buzz bait. And he's a great buzz bait fisherman. And he's, a, he's a jig guy. And he's going to catch him when they bite that stuff. But he is very, very uh, consistent. So I think we can kind of end the debate whether 
FLW guys aren't as good as Bassmaster. I think there's excellent anglers at all tour levels, and Scott's a great example. If you're good, you're good. It doesn't matter uh, what series or tour uh, you fish. But, you know, it's kind of, while we're talking about that, I posted a screenshot on Instagram of this big spreadsheet, and guys were asking me, well, what are you doing, Bait Man? What are you doing with this spreadsheet? Well, I got bored. And uh, I really wanted to see what baits these guys caught them on. And I like numbers. I'm a numbers guy. So I've been compiling a list of all the baits that FLW, Bassmaster, Major League Fishing, in the articles where they do the top 10 baits of the tournament. And most guys give two or three baits. So I've been just piling those things in there. And I'm not done yet. It's going to take me another day and a half or so logging this. But I'm going to tell you. If I was fishing any of these tours, I'd get really good throwing a Cinco, a green pumpkin one. Because if you're throwing a green pumpkin Cinco and you're good with it, you're going to cash a few checks. Uh, it, it's really crazy when you look at all these top baits to see how simple these pros really um, keep it. I mean, crankbait colors. The dominant one's red in the spring, chartreuse and blue, or some kind of shad color. Not a whole lot of variation. You don't see a lot of the off-the-wall stuff. Worms, soft plastics, it's pretty much a green pumpkin and black and blue fest out there. So that may shed some insight when you're trying to choose tackle or stuff. If, if you don't know, just get green pumpkin. I mean, but it, it it's nice to see a contrast. And there's some surprises on there. I think it's going to surprise you to see how much guys are really throwing spinning rods. And it's more than just major league fishing. They're not the only guys that throw spinning rods and drop shots. Um, but it's definitely cool. It gives you kind of a reference, uh, when you're looking at this, uh, well, this color is very hot in the spring and this style worm, whereas you transition to more to the spawn, it's a more natural color in this style and, and your crankbaits and crankbaits are pretty popular. Um, so was, there's a little thing called a jackhammer. I keep seeing these guys winning a lot of money on this bait, so. I'm I'm not even halfway through, and it's it's a pretty cool day to mine. I think it's going to come out to be a really awesome uh, YouTube video. Speaking of baits, I think uh, Rapal announced that uh, they inked a deal with Bass, so that's cool. Um, Berkeley, they've got a new contingency program going on, and I think this even goes out to kayak fishermen, so that's really cool as well. And speaking of Pro Tour. I'm going to give a shout out to my man, B Lat, Brian Latimer. He is going to head to the Opens. Uh, he's going to roll the dice and try to qualify for the Elite Series. And he is a really good dude, down to earth. And uh, I, think he's, I think he's going to do it. He's very consistent. And one thing I'll tell you about Brian Latimer, he told me years ago when I first kind of started YouTube and he did, he said, I'm going to hustle, I'm going to grind, I'm going to get that. You know, 50, 60,000 subscribers. I know I can do it. I'm going to open my own shop online. And guess what? He's doing it. Man, he's doing it big. He's doing it the B lat way. And uh, props to you, Brian. I want to see you on the Elite Series. Um, you're going you're, you're going to be successful no matter where you went. You already proved it on the FLW Tour. So let's go to Bass and see what happens. And speaking of tours... Major League Fishing had a Inside the Bass Pro Tour on CBS last night after the NFL, but I think a lot of people's show got cut off, unfortunately. Football game uh, ran over time. Not really that cool, but hopefully you got to watch it. I didn't get to watch it. I was napping before work because, you know, I work midnights and stuff. And speaking of FLW2, if you didn't know, uh, Phoenix Boats is the official sponsor of FLW. Uh, Phoenix, great boats. Many guys run them. I've been in one several times. I really like it. I'm a big fan of the 721 Pro, fast, nibble, good fishing platform. Uh, there is a little rumor out there, and I don't want to say where I heard this from, but I would say it's a pretty good source that... Usually when you qualify for the All-American, you know, formerly Ranger provided boats to all 50 contestants. I've heard that there's a chance that Phoenix won't be able to do that this year, but it will start next year. 
Now, I don't make that as a knock on Phoenix at all. Uh, obviously, this deal just happened. And I don't think it's really that big of a deal for the anglers because years ago when the PAA was formed and all this other stuff, one of the big things guys were griping about was fishing the final day or fishing these the classic or these big championships is you had to fish out of whatever to sponsor boat. Well, guess what? It happened to Mike Iaconelli. It happened to several other guys. The boat, the motor malfunctions. That wasn't their fault. That was on the boat or motor manufacturer. And all of a sudden, they're out of contention. Live wells messed up. You know, here's the deal. If you're in your own boat using your own equipment and that thing, that happens, that's on you. If you're in a brand new boat that's provided by somebody else and that happens, that's on them. So, in a way, it's good and it's bad, but I actually feel it's better than it is worse. But props to Phoenix Boats for stepping up, sponsoring the FLW Tour. Speaking of boat manufacturers, there's another rumor out there. and You can probably find it on the internet or you may have heard, but Yamaha, Skeeter, let a lot of pros go. Mostly guys that fish Major League Fishing. So there's a lot of gears in my head that are turning about that, especially knowing the guys are letting go. And I'm not going to put their names out there. That's not for me to announce or anything. But... Uh, Man, some of these guys have been with Skeeter Yamaha forever. And uh, I'm not a big fan of sponsors really trying to swing that hammer. Like, you know what? You've been with us forever. You've been super, super loyal. But, you know, you fish this circuit we don't like, and we're just going to cut you off here. But, you know, business isn't always fun, but I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and I had a Skeeter boat. With the Yamaha outboard. I never had any issues out of it. Love my Skeeter. Love my Yamaha. Um, and you know what? I'd probably buy one today if I had the money. So there are a lot of good boats and motors out on the market. So those guys, I'm sure they'll find a ride pretty quick. If that is indeed true. So I'm trying to think. Is there anything else I need to cover? Oh yeah. We still have this deal lingering with Travis Manson. And the guys that qualified for the FLW Tour Championship. Uh, Travis has put out a video. was asked to sign a petition. All kinds of stuff. And man, I feel for him. Uh, but who are we to really blame for this? Uh, do we blame MLF? Or do we blame the old FLW? And me, I think if you want somebody to pay that $10,000, it isn't Major League Fishing. You go to Trish Blake. She's who sold FLW. A lot of people don't know this. It, that whole sale was in limbo because Erwin Jacobs, you know what happened. He, he shot his wife, killed himself. Well, you cannot profit off a of bankruptcy. And uh, I believe in the state of Michigan where, or Minnesota where he's from. I'm pretty sure that's a law in most places. So that thing was really tied up in court. Assets were frozen, all kinds of stuff. And so she, she sold FLW to major league fishing they did not acquire their debt you know they bought the company and and all the workings and everything they didn't buy the negative equity into it they started at ground zero so if i'm petitioning anybody i'm petitioning trish blake for that ten thousand dollars but that's just me i could be totally wrong and there's a very high possibility i am totally wrong and i'll be the first to admit it but Lots of cool stuff going on in the fishing world. Guys are getting ready. Uh, it is almost Christmas. Tackle Warehouse is fixing to have sale. More iCast baits are coming out. Guys, let me know uh, in a YouTube comment what's a bait that you had a lot of success for. And, you know, I'll put that underrated bait thing up on my personal Facebook post. And man, some of the responses I got were crazy. Guys were saying Mega Bass Vision 110 is the most overrated bait excuse me let me back up most overrated bait out there people are saying mega bass vision 110 whopper plopper which i kind of agree with there um it's just amazing but guys were saying like the kvd 1.5 is overrated how do you overrate a five dollar crankbait because that's what it is it's a great crankbait it's 5.99 it's really hard to overrate a strike king crankbait they are what they are they're great they don't cost a lot of money um they catch a ton of fish and uh but you know when you put things out there sometimes people don't really read into it they just start 
you know, putting stuff like flying lure, helicopter lure. Those are made for TV lures. They made a bunch of money off those. And I actually made a commercial for a helicopter lure with Roland Martin. And uh, the dude still owes me some baits. And I'm pretty pissed off about it to this day. Um, I've told Scott the story. He understood. Scott's a good guy. I have, I have nothing but uh, love for Scott Martin. He's always treated me really well. So hopefully one day me and Roland can connect and I can let him know how disappointed I was on that. But we're going to quit talking with me. I'm fixing to get Mr. Low Budget Live Luke Duncan on here. We're going to get into some deep subjects, some thoughts on the pro tours. We're going to talk about baits. We're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about just being a redneck in general because that's what we are. And uh, we want to get some good stories from his neck of the woods and Hopefully we can entertain you for as long as he wants to talk. Could be 30, 40 minutes, or it could be two hours. Hopefully my laptop has enough juice for that, but really excited. So coming up now, let's get him on here. Mr. TH Marine, Luke Duncan. Luke, go ahead. Just, just tell us how did low budget life come about? <laughs> I actually was just telling somebody this earlier today. They were asking about the name. So, Low budget kind of sprung out of, uh, I'm a huge podcast junkie from Joe Rogan to Theo Vaughn's podcast to Ike Live, uh, Stray Cast guys. I've always been a fan of podcasts and I went and did Ike Live in the studio up at Mike's house a couple years ago. This is really cool. And, uh, and I like to run my mouth. I love to talk and I love to talk fishing and I love to talk about the sport that we all know and love and. And so Man, that sounds like somebody else I know. Exactly. Exactly. We're, we're, we're one and the same, man. And, uh, but I was talking to, uh, Darian is fishing D money, uh, who sucks at YouTube. I want to throw that out there. He's but freaking I talking, awful. I can't he's believe terrible. he's not quit yet. And he shaves his arms, but that's neither here nor there. But, uh, but I was talking to Darian and my buddy Corey and I was like, Hey man, I'd like to do a podcast. And, utilize the Instagram live platform. And so low budget live, the name came out of, I, I played music for years. So I had a ton of equipment sitting around and we figured out how to do a podcast setup and run it into an iPhone and do a live show, but utilize the free platform of Instagram. So low budget the only thing, and this was two years ago, and the only thing we missed on was we never recorded any of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was all live uh, for the love of the game, so to speak. And we lost. I had, At one time, I had, what in Missouri one time, I had Roland Martin, Jimmy Houston, and Ott Defoe in a corner booth at a restaurant for an hour and a half. Like, there's no, rec there's no, no recording <sighs> of that. So, so Brian the Carpenter from Mike Live who's always been a really good friend and a really good supporter of everything I've had going. He called me one day and he goes, listen, Duncan, you got to get this thing on iTunes. He's like, you, what you're doing is cool. Your viewpoints. I mean, I like how you're outspoken, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but people can't always just watch it live and then it's gone 24 hours later. So I agree. He's like, you're dragging this equipment around. You're, so, so last year and just through fishing the tour and everything, I was always busy, right. super busy and through TH, you know, and, but last year, I, I through some requests, I had people email me and things and 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 uh, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook. I decided to, I invested in a stinking MacBook. You know, I got, got me a MacBook and I decided to start recording this stuff, taking it a little more serious. And then low budget live, not so live happened. I, I got to where I enjoyed doing call-ins with people or doing face-to-face -face mm -hmm. interviews without the actual comment, you know, interruption. Because I've got ADD. Oh, dude, me degree. too. Like, and, I don't know if I'm, you've ever watched my YouTube streams, uh -huh, but like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm panicking sometimes. I'm afraid I'm not going to oh, answer yeah. somebody's question. No doubt, that's me. And and Darian would yell at me. He'd say, "Dude, you got to stay on topic. You got." But a comment would pop up, and it would either be funny or be outrageous or whatever, and it would send me down a rabbit hole. So I've enjoyed the format of kind of taking that out. Um, in 2020, my goal is to do one or two lives a month, though, because I really do enjoy talking to the fans and getting the questions and answering as as I go. But at the same time, I like to get the points across that I want to get across without being interrupted. And I like to 
you know, let the pros talk. And, and unfortunately, some of the guests I had on, I feel like I either stepped on, and I'm notorious for that too, but I either stepped on what they were saying because a comment came in or whatever, you know. So, um, and, and you know how it is. I have comments mm-hmm. that'll derail the whole show. You know, somebody says, hey, you know, we think you're Randy Flowers. <laughs> and then I spent an hour. Oh, you get that too? You know? <laughs> oh, dude, do I get it? I basically, I might as well share a, a birthday with the guy. Yeah, I've, um, I've got people that would, you know, put the pink slip to their vehicle that I am Randy. And for the uh, record, no I am not Randy Flowers. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've said. I, I think I've proven, uh, hopefully, to everybody in this fishing world the last couple months that if I've got an opinion about something, I'll just air it out there as Luke Duncan. You don't have to worry about me doing it behind a fake Facebook. Like I'll yeah, I, uh, I'll mean, be <laughs> honest. That's kind of that's actually kind of how we met. And uh, I'll go on the record and say, you know what, I could be a loose cannon on the internet, you know, and and you know the story. And I said something, and I wasn't trying to be just mean. And you sent me an Instagram message, say, hey man, you know, hey buddy, yeah, yeah, that, I, that's, yeah, absolutely. That's my relative, and I and I, I took a step back, and, and I'll never forget that. And I went, you know, you never know who you're going to insult, and you never want to burn a bridge with someone whose ass you might have to kiss later. I, I've learned well, that, and well, 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 not even that though, dude. I think it's um, we all get caught up in that Instagram comment game, Facebook comment game, you know. And and you get caught up in the heat of the moment. I know you and I are big Vols fans. Go Vols. Oh, and you geez. get caught up on Twitter fighting with a Florida fan. Dude, we're all people at the end of the day. And so just because our opinions differ, our views differ, doesn't mean they're bad people. I mean, Florida fans are clearly bad people. I mean, I think we can say that. You know, <laughs> if you're pulling from Florida. But, uh, <laughs> but, but no, I, I think that – so in the heat of the moment, you, you said something. And uh, and truly, and it was um, – and I, and I sent you a message because I was like – because I respect you – um, known of you for a long time, and I was like, "Hey, dude, listen." And and you handled it like a pro, and handled it like a gentleman, and uh, and and it was something that like this buddy of mine was just, you know, he was super upset about it, and uh, and that's the thing. I've got really thick skin. I can handle whatever, uh, for the most part, and uh, but but dude, and that's yeah, that's where you and I kind of crossed paths one of the first times was was through something like that for sure. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I I learned a lot from that. But, uh, you know, speaking of Twitter, I always put on my YouTube, follow me on Twitter, but sometimes I don't think that's a good idea, especially when Tennessee is playing football or basketball, unless we're winning. So I think I'll quit putting that in my YouTube. That's kind of, especially, and now we're really getting down to one of these rabbit holes. Uh, The guinea pig, the guinea pig I saw Saturday. (laughs) Yeah. Shout out to Chris Van Pally for oh my goodness to, for blowing that up to the world. Oh. That was amazing. But yeah, I, I, Twitter is a beautiful thing, man. I've been on it since the um, since the beginning, and uh, it's a beautiful place, and it's a really dark place too. And I, I think you and I can definitely agree on that. We see some things on that vol Twitter sometimes that you're like, "Come on, guys, hey, let's yeah. put the brakes on this." You know? Yeah. We, we we haven't won a national championship since '98, guys. Come on now, let's let's. Let's yeah. let's leave the Georgia fans alone. <laughs> right, yeah. It's been since but, 1980. Bless their hearts. But uh, oh, I know, bless their hearts. But, you know, but it's, uh, funny, it's funny, man. It's funny how that that Twitter thing goes. The whole internet world is uh is it's something else. If there's one thing I have learned is, is you don't piss ball Twitter off. I mean, no, man, it's amazing. I mean, if you want your coach fired, just let Vol Twitter know it happened. Dude, but I'm telling you, and and we and we don't have to just completely go down that rabbit hole. But you and I are both passionate about it. There's never been anything more amazing to me in my life, truly, uh, than seeing the power of social media in the moments of when Tennessee, uh, we got the stupid Curry and 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 old Bev in there. Yeah, Shiano uh, gate. And, and and the Shiano deal happens, and I'm sitting in a deer stand, and I'm watching this thing implode, and I'm going. What? And my dad and I are screenshotting stuff back and forth from deer stand to deer stand, you know, because we're like, they're hiring Shiana, we're pissed, and, you know, <laughs> and uh, and and freaking Twitter stopped a coaching hire, got an athletic director fired. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was incredible I to know. see, and it gave I mean, Tennessee fans a bad rap, rep a little bit. But we but, were right. But that well, we were right, and we got we got a guy that I think most of us um never saw coming to be yep. the guy that we would all kind of band around 
uh, and we had questionable moments this year where we were we all like, did. you know what, I, maybe we hate this guy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But but and and you know you've had everything from the rumors that he's a Bama implant that's trying to you know, ruin our program to you know it's, it's been really funny. But uh, to see, I think he just wants to coach football. That's it. He does. He loves football. He's just a football guy. And uh, yeah. man, give I, him a I, can I, of skull and a defensive yeah. playbook, and he's good. Yeah, absolutely, man. And gets on those players, you know, gets gets on them, man. It's uh, it's fun to watch, and I, I think that uh, I think we'll return back to some glory days here before long, man. I really do. I think that he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be something to uh, keep our eye on the next few years. But uh, anything's got to be better than what we what we've had, you know. Man, we've suffered long enough. It, it's it's been rough, but you know, speaking of the fans, and and, and we'll, we'll get this over to fishing. You know, the fans have been pretty passionate the last year, I say, on social media about FLW, about bass, uh, major league fishing, good and bad. Some anglers have also been very passionate, which, you know, we've both talked about. And, uh, you know, you got this thing with uh, Travis Manson and the guys uh, that yeah. qualified for the tour championship. And, you know, I made the comment, you know, when a business buys another business, they, there's nothing that legally says, hey, you know, if you're getting a discount from this store or you're on whatever promotional program or if you qualified for this, they have to hold it up to that. Now, morally, I think we both know there's a right way and a wrong way to handle That's this. That's right. But I really do feel for the guys. But And I, I said this earlier before we went live. I think some of the blame really maybe should go to Trish Blake if you were wanting to get a check maybe that's who you contact because she's the one that sold the company yeah you know she did and man I, under I, very I unfortunate situation uh, uh, circumstances well and i think the deal was cooking long before um any of that occurred uh right. i think we all kind of know that but uh um if anything i think what tragically happened up there with mr jacob was probably just a little you know a, a bump in the road or it might have happened sooner um, I, I, and to, from my opinion, but you know, I had Travis on my podcast last night, uh, should go a uh, shameless plug should go up today, but uh, plug it all you I, want, buddy. Yeah. But a Andrew Upshaw, um, is a good friend of mine and he's, you know, he won the coast championship and, uh, yeah. these guys signed up for the coasters and gave their money to the FLW organization based off the fact that they could make the Forest Wood cup. And for a lot of guys, that's the only opportunity to make that marquee championship that they would ever have because they either don't have the time, the finances, the passion, you know, whatever to pursue it at the quote tour level. Um, so when they paid their entry fees, they expected that that could be a thing in yep. their That's life that if they, that they met all the requirements and they did, which is like running a gauntlet to mm -hmm. make it th that way that you would be rewarded. And so, you know, just a few weeks before the, the deal, the rumors start flying, the Cup's going away, before the Coastal Championship, Cup's going away. There were a lot of West Coast guys and Northern guys that didn't even show up for the championship mm -hmm. because of it. Good um, fishermen, too. Good fishermen, really good fishermen. And and then the, the deal happens, and basically they've been told, yeah, we're, there's there's nothing we can do. Um, you know, I, I don't – I really – you can blame FLW for, for selling and I don't know their financial, you know, MLF's tried to act like they're the, they're the saving grace uh, of a dying business. I don't know if that's, uh, I feel like it must, something must've been going on um, if they wanted to actually sell it. Um, I know I sat in a lot of angler panel meetings with other pros with the FLW brass many times. We were working on a lot of things. I've been out mm -hmm. talking about this on a podcast. We were working on a lot of things that went out the window uh, the second they, that they got sold. So I almost feel like I wasted my time and, you know, and, and, and that we were all disrespected in that because we were made to believe that we were actually changing something. And we, and we weren't, you know, because it was being sold out from under us. Uh, but I feel like, I feel like um, most of the people at FLW are some of the best people I've ever met. Absolutely. So I can't, so I can't lay the blame on anybody. Like, you know, Trish was always really good to me, but like Miss Kathy Fennell is one of the sweetest people on planet mm -hmm. Earth. Hard, hard, hard worker. He cares about the organization. You know the 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 bitter truth in this is they don't they don't own it anymore, and they're not right. running the show. Um, and we all we all know who's running the show uh, now. And 
who's not standing for uh, what should be right. And we saw it with the TBF guy, Preston Craig. They said mm-hmm. they weren't going to do the live in the dream package because they weren't going to honor it. Well, then they backpedaled because there are 30,000 TBF members. Yeah, That's they a just, lot of membership. They just pumped him up in the press release I, I saw course. earlier. You know. Of course, yeah. It's, it's and I, I, I hope that dude wins one. I'm I all do for too. it. Yeah, of course. I hope so too. And that's an amazing program. And it's very hard to win that turn to qualify for that tournament, let alone win it, you know, to get to go to that. But uh but that all that being said, man, I feel like um they could take care of these guys if they wanted to, but I think financially there's a lot of burden right now because you've lost Ranger as a sponsor, mm-hmm. uh TH Marine cut way back, uh Coast is gone, Yeti cut way back. Uh, and I know they'll sell some to some non endemics and things, but things are not what they were there. I think that they bought this business that was supposedly failing that had a steady sponsor base. And then they came in and tried to bend everybody over a barrel. So the sponsors left. A lot mm-hmm. of sponsors left with a lot of big money. Um, but here's what I know. When, because the thing that gets said is, you know, we're not honoring any contracts because that's what happens, you know, in a buyout. Well, with the sponsors, they said the same thing. But when the sponsors pushed back, then it became, hey, we can honor that. <laughs> right. We can honor yeah. that. So for the anglers, I don't understand why it's, why, it's any, why it should be any different because the anglers should be the focus. And guys that are outspoken, I mean, Travis Manson, you know, he's up to like 20,000 views on his pod or on his video about, you know, why, what happened and why he, he feel like feels like he was wronged. And my thing is, I, I get that's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars if you send all of them a ten thousand dollar check, but by God, that's the minimum of what they would have got if they'd have got to fish the event. Right. You know, something needs to happen. But I mean, I'm all for I'm all for just you know, hey, just put those guys in the tour championship next year. Absolutely. You know? Well, Jason Jason Christie's fishing the tour again, so you might, you might as well let let whoever <laughs> in you will let not him. not the real one, right? No, not the real one. The guy that some reason keeps popping back up in bass fishing, but. Uh, yeah, yeah I was really hoping yeah. to on FLW, and, and you know we're not beating a dead horse. There's obviously no, no, there's no, no, things no, no. I, I like about major league fishing and of FLW, course, but one of my biggest gripes with FLW was if you bought a Ranger boat, a brand new one, they let you in. I mean, to fact a is, extent, I, yeah. Fact is, if I knew someone in FLW, and trust me, I know people at FLW. I, I worked for them one time, and I went down to Jetta Marina. Over there in Coward City, uh, Ranger dealer Kerry Clark, great people, and I bought a brand- one at a time. <laughs> yeah, and I bought one brand new one, and I said, "Here, here's fifty thousand dollar cash. You think you could get me in?" I think old Bill Taylor, which Bill's not a big fan of me because the Vols, and uh, <laughs> but well, I might. I'm- I might have had to go to somebody else, but I think I might could have squeaked in there, but I probably would have Jason Christie the thing. Well, that, there was some, uh, you know, there was there's a lot of things that went that went on like that, and I was fortunate I qualified through the the Carolina side and then requalified every year. I never had a uh, never had an amazing year by any means, but I never failed to requalify in the top 100 by their qualification standard. The problem I always had was that, um, especially last year, it was like a free for all. We let Jason Christie in. There were all these things, and we were trying to make it on these angler panel meetings. We were trying to make the tour more legitimate, right. and you got guys like Brian Thrift fishing. And and Scott Martin and you know Brian Ladmer, Brad Knight and Joseph West, Jeremy Law, you know, the list goes on and on. These guys that will absolutely knock your teeth out any Look, week you get ready. I Terry mean, Bolton know, is still a hammer. Yeah, uh, Terry Bolton, yeah. All, all these guys, and I, you know, Matt Stephan, and, and then you see these the guys that that were there that left the Morgans and the Straters and Zach Burgess and you know Justin Atkins, all these guys, you know, Shane LaHughes and Brandon Cops. I mean, these guys were absolute you know, look at what they did on the Elite Series this year. They wrecked it. You know, they, they you know, nine out of the top ten AOI were all FLW guys. Uh, FLW Scott guys. Canterbury? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's insane, dude. So, you had a legitimacy to the tour, mm-hmm. and I was really proud to be a part of it, but at the same time, you always let the, you know, either sponsor exemptions or blah, 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 blah. There were always just a few guys that got back in, and, and they were great guys, nothing against them. Uh but it they just didn't belong, and you need a uh, qualifying structure. Well, now they, they tried to get that in place. That's what we worked for. This year was going to be the year, right, that all the bottom dwellers, 
everything was and dude, I was sweating because I had the worst year I'd ever had last year. But I requalified right uh, before all this, and I had requalified, and I was going to fish the tour this year until all this stuff kind of came down the pipeline, some other things in life, and I decided to step step away from the tour this year. But now with everything that's happened, you've had a mass exodus. Scott Martin leaves. Be like, you know, don't have to beat this dead horse. I mean, everybody knows what's going on, but they really had to scrape to get a hundred right. and they filled it. But that mm-hmm. roster it sure is, did. they filled it, you know, but it's, it's not pretty. And I hope for the guys that are very legitimate and there are a lot of them over there that are, that I hope yes. the fans will, will not be turned off by the fact that there's a lot of people on there they could care less about. You know, I'm going to watch uh, it. I, I always do. I watch I them all. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, if I can, I watch Bass Live and FLW Live at the same time and MLF and Bass Live and whatever combo, however big my screen is, I just put the HDMI on the laptop, hook it up to that 60 yeah. inch, split them around. Yeah. But no, there's yeah, some new faces in, in the tour that I think are going to be, you know, a lot of guys haven't heard of. Cody Nichols, he's from around your way. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Great fisherman. He's a hammer. Yeah. Uh, of course, man. Cole Floyd. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, rookie of the year, maybe. Uh, probably. Probably will win an event. Yeah. I mean, he's I no think. Shane Jewell, but he's pretty no, good. No, he's no Shane Jewell. He's no Shane Jewell, but uh, there's only one Shane. There's God. only one Shane. Do you uh, have a well, good Shane Jewell story for me that's appropriate? Man, actually, so Sh- Sh- Shane and, and I, this is what's funny about Shane and I is Shane's one of those guys that. Everybody in the bass fishing world knows Shane because he's like you and I. He likes to run his mouth online, and he's always super opinionated, and, he, and he's around, and Shane's a good guy. Yeah. And, uh, and But we're from the same area. I have never talked to Shane in person one time in my entire life that I, that I can think of. Really? But I feel like we know each other, and, uh, but I don't, so I don't have any good Shane stories other than um, you know the fact that him and his daddy – uh, Eddie take a lot of money from people around here from time to time. That's for dang sure. I've, I've heard his uh, dad is a pretty good stick. Oh, he catches them, man. He, Eddie's always um, one of those guys around here that I've always looked up to. Um, just really catches them that I've been around, you know, hearing the name Eddie Jewell since I was a kid because he was always in a lot of the local stuff I fished, you know, back in the day with my dad and stuff. But, uh, but Shane and I, you know, like I said, I feel like I know Shane, but, uh, but, but we just never, you know, we never run into each other. We and we might, you know, have crossed paths a couple times in life. But dude, that's the crazy thing is the life I have. I travel so much. I'm just not mm-hmm. here that much, you know. Um, and I actually think Shane may live in the next town over from where I'm at in Pulaski, Tennessee, which is about 20 minutes away. I actually think that's where Shane may may be living right now. I may be wrong on that, Shane. I'm sorry, buddy, if I'm getting all this wrong. But yeah. Uh, I- I've never met him, uh, but I do message him about boats I know for sale. Because yeah, I'll be honest, when it comes boat, to yeah. a bass boat and one's for sale, and you want to know is it a good deal or a bad deal, dude, he knows his stuff. He is well, a boat he, freaking guru. He he is man. He knows his stuff, and he, uh, you know, he even sold Houston Chris one. I noticed. Uh, yeah, Houston was a big big vol guy. Um, I, I saw that Shane had helped him out on that. So yeah, he, he works hard at that, man. I, I have, uh, but it, it's funny how many people in this fishing world say, like, man, you know, you from Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, you know, Shane, Jewel? <laughs> I get yeah. it a lot. And there's actually a, another guy from here, a guy named Hoyt Tidwell that has worked yes. for FLW for years. Hoyt's a great guy was a great co-angler on tour, great fisherman. And Hoyt and I never met in our entire life until i got on tour <laughs> and he lives 10 minutes from my house wow yeah and, and now you know we're, and we're good buddies but it's like uh we truly we met in an flw registration hey i'm from the same town i've lived here for 36 years man how often do small you, town. how often do you fish pickwick uh living where you but, live uh, man I, you, you know pickwick's my truly it's one of my favorite lakes especially in the fall but um i don't get to fish it as much as I would like to, uh, I fish a, a lot in the, in the, in the fall. Like I said, I'll get to go, you know, seven or eight times in the fall, um, and a few times in the spring, but dude, I don't, I don't get to go as much when I get time to go when I'm home. Um, Wilson Lake is 35 minutes from my driveway. It's, you know, it's 15 miles long. It's 
quick, easy. It's a great fishery. and you Very underrated fishery. Yes, one of the best fisheries in the country for the amount of pressure it gets, for the size of the fish. It's amazing. And um, it's somewhere it's always been really special to me. I used to fish it over 100 days a year back when I was in college and stuff. And uh, when I get five minutes, that tends to be where I'm drawn to because you can go down there no matter what the weather's doing or what you, you can mm-hmm. find something to do. Um, and Pickwick's, you know, it's an animal, man. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a huge fishery and, and, uh, and I'm about an hour from Pickwick. So, right. uh, but I, but I love it, man. It's, it's a special, special place, but I, I don't get to fish any of the lakes around home as much as I would like to just because of my travel schedule and stuff. And I'm hoping this year by not being on tour, um, that I get to, really sink my teeth in you know Heck yeah. when they're when they're smashing them around one here. thing i do want to bring up you know uh on the pickwick subject actually the whole tennessee river thing is you know we, we got a crisis up here on kentucky barker Lakes. Without a doubt, man. And, and that's the asian carp and man i hate to tell you guys they're coming they're they're oh, in pickwick coming. and you, you want to talk about everybody kind of get together and unite one voice mark menendez has done an excellent job going to congress trying to fight this thing is man these asian carp are a huge huge problem and it, i feel like it's only the fishermen that realize it you know everybody else is like oh no big deal they'll they'll find a way man there there's a reason they spent buku billions of dollars to keep them out of the great lakes and without a doubt and if boy duckett can do anything good <laughs> he would get behind uh, the guys on Kentucky Lake, FLW's hometown, and he would swing that checkbook around and figure out a way to really help the efforts uh, to stop the migration of these things or whatever. Because I'm going to tell you, they get in Gunnersville, that whole town's that's it's fishing. It's a and fishing town, yeah. It, if they town. ruin Gunnersville, it's bad. Here, at least on Kentucky Lake, you know we've got a lot of chemical plants in the in the area, and that's really where guys go to make big money i don't obviously i'm here in my freaking cold bait room doing a podcast but (laughs) it's a it's a really big deal and you know i see some companies starting to show some support but you know uh you know th marine uh y'all done a lot as far as conservation for fish and and promoting that and, and the wellness of 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 the sport um Sometimes I'm really I get tired of here growing the sport. Um, <laughs> the everybody's sport that, growing the sport. I want people yeah. to just enjoy the sport and not worry about growing it, but put your effort towards keeping it sustainable. Because uh, man, it, these carp, an ecosystem cannot sustain with these things around. No, and, and Kentucky Lake's a very special fishery to a lot of people. And I've got a lot of great memories of the first cut I ever made on tour was there in my rookie year. And, you know, I fished Kentucky Lake my whole life, uh, especially the upper end, you know, below Pickwick Dam and things. And to see what's happened, you know, from my rookie year, we went there and then we went there in 18, I guess. And to see the difference in that fishery in just that short amount of time, you know, and see those damn carp, dude, just everywhere. And you can't even idle a ledge, you know. Uh, it's like the fact that Jason Lambert found 100 pounds of bass, him and Randy Haynes, the only hole that had any on it the whole time. But no wonder they had to share. You know how many you know? times I've fished that freaking green <laughs> buoy? I've heard, I've heard that so many times with so many people, man. It's so funny. And I've never caught a nine-pounder off. I catch like a five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Move on here, and he catches a yeah. nine. Oh, I know, man. It's the stars aligned uh, for sure. But it, it's sad to see, and and I know they're coming, and I know guys are seeing them in Pickwick, and and you know I can only hope that that guys like Mark Mendez and guys like you and and me and and some of these others that are, that are good at running our mouth, I hope that that people will pay attention to what we're talking about. But it's it's devastating what it's done to that community, and I think towns like Paris are seeing it. You know, I think uh, on the upper end of the lake up there, or the, excuse me, lower end of the lake, they'll really start to see a. Um, Man, I'm a I'm just going to be honest. Yeah, everybody, I, everybody I've talked to, my my wife's aunt owns the the famous Ponderosa right here in Draftonville, yeah. and she said, "Man, the fishermen didn't come this year." And right. they're not. It's the carp, you know, you know, and 
the fishermen have hurt ourselves too. We've broadcast that Kentucky Lake sucks. It's so bad. The car well, ruined saying, everything. But, but, but it's not fair to have if you got a guy driving eight hundred miles, they need to know that it's no good. Correct. You know, I mean that, that that's that's only fair. And because um, it's like a bait and switch thing if you're telling people, hey, but no, it's fine. Come on down here. And then they plan their vacation to come down there and they swim with the car for a week. And yeah, it's kind of like pulling. C20 that sucks <laughs> kind of like pulling the same five pound around on Facebook and saying man the bigs are biting the head best gotcha. five 30 pounds we've all seen you know guys yeah, do that yeah. and that's on every lake in the country that's not Kentucky oh, lake. That's a, but that's a fact well you know, let's talk a little bit about TH Marine I don't want to run too much time I know you're a busy man oh. uh, I do have a few questions too uh real quick get let's get a TH Marine plug what is one TH Marine product that somebody listened to the show needs to have if you've got a bass boat you need a tackle titan uh which is a magnetic lure holder and it it 3m tapes on the underneath side of your lid and dude i'm telling you because i'm a messy 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 dude and when i cut off one of my crankbaits you throw it up there it holds it in place and you can put it in a tackle box later or if you got favorite stuff you know i've got go-to's that i like to keep out hell i've always got them right there on the lid i don't want to dig through a box for them i've got them right there uh held tight with a magnet whether that be jigs it'll hold anything um but hooks and and uh jigs and spinner baits and i've always got it right there but dude it's you know 40 bucks and it's just simple i but, think uh, uh, that's one thing i've got i'd say for christmas ask your wife to get you a tackle tight and i think your boy darian has a discount code to th marine uh, no luke does luke 10 darian that, doesn't do that. oh his uh, his is fake Cut him out. We'll cut Don't you out. That deal. And, you know, six cents just that put deal. some. They just put some more shorts up there. Oh, and I'm in a dilemma longer. because uh, they might be too long for me, yet too short for Darian. <laughs> or, or maybe it's the, the reverse. Yeah, they're yeah, reverse. yeah, too long for Darian, they're too short for me. For Darian, they're too short for you. Yeah, for sure. He likes he likes to show off them legs. <sighs> yeah, he. he, he uh, is he related to Gerald Swindle? That's all I want. Uh, he is actually his nephew. No, well, I can definitely is. tell by those legs. Yeah, for sure. He's he's Gerald's nephew uh, by by marriage. <laughs> dude, Gerald, Gerald Gerald's a good dude, man. I think the world of G. He uh, he's he's a good man. We we've done some hunting, some fishing, filming, and he's always just treated me uh, like a normal human being. So I, I really respect him. Well, I, I think of him like family. He's helped me get through a lot of things in my life. And, uh, you know, most recently, I, of course, I lost, I lost my mother, which has been well documented. But uh, whenever she was fighting for her life uh, and fighting breast cancer, you know, Gerald and I did the infamous beard war on social media where we grew these ridiculous beards and uh, took shots at each other daily on social media. And it was it was really good. We raised $25,000 uh, wow. for breast cancer awareness a couple of years back. So. Gee, he's a good man. Dude, mine's getting ridiculous as well. Uh, <laughs> it's just laziness working that midnight shift. I just don't care. I'm I just get like, it. I've wore, don't make this That's sound make me sound like a hobo, but I've wore the same pair of jeans at one uh, almost a year uh, every day. I would wash them every other day, but I just while well, buy new jeans, I'm just going to go work and build some dang windows and get caulk all over them and everything. So here's the thing, man: you can make a pair of jeans last two or three days. You just got to be careful what you get on them. You know, right? That's the thing. You can make them last now. And you got to take a bath too. I, I tell every guys, well, guys, y'all got to take some baths. Though. It's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about, uh, i got a few questions. We'll, we'll hit some Absolutely. bait stuff, and I'm going to let you go here. Uh, let's see. This will come on Facebook. That's from Shane Jewel. We already answered that. Uh, <laughs> Who the, he said the most famous guy in Lawrenceburg, right? My wife sent it to me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. A ask Luke, if you could only throw three crankbaits, which ones would they be? So three crankbaits for me, um, of course, this changes by the time of year. Y'all get my ADD with this, but... For me, I'm going C6, C10, and a C20 by six cents. Um, if I could only have three to kind of cover my basis is what I like to do. That's what I'm throwing. And if I can only take one color with me um, for the rest of my days, it's lavender citrus. Yeah, dude, I like the purple. That's why I had him do. Yeah, the, so that's good. why I had him do the jank juice. Uh, yeah, that was the one color he Casey was missing was a good table rock shed. Yeah, 
No doubt. You put that, you put yeah. that one in a C20 there on Pickwick. That's going to mess them up. Uh, listen, that, that C20 and C25 in the summertime on Gunnersville and Pickwick. Uh, I fished Gunnersville the last three or four summers way more than I have Pickwick. And, and uh, just, uh, they like that thing. And unfortunately, Darian exposed it to the freaking fishing world. So now everybody knows about uh, the lavender citrus. But it's a beautiful color. And it yeah, uh, that, it catches them up, but but the, but man, that C six and C ten, I think for the most part, most of the year, um, you can always catch a few fish on those too. Yeah, that's kind of a play off of old Norman color that uh, no doubt that the old Norman lavender shad, and that was uh, a that right. was one my daddy always threw on Kentucky Lake, the DD twenty two. That's right. I've I've won a lot of money over the years on lavender shad at a deep little end. Yes, a deep baby in and a deep very deep underrated baits, man. No doubt. And uh, you know what's funny yeah. though is when all the pros would like come to town and and, and buy crank, but you had guys buying six x d six x six cents. You had a lot of guys buying DD twenty twos. No doubt about it. So, what's funny about that crankbait though, dude? And I know you remember these days for sure. Is we thought we were doing something, man. Like we thought we were deep cranking. Yeah, <laughs> get down there. We get down to fourteen foot now. <laughs> They didn't even run that deep. <laughs> no. And you had guys it's like... Uh, hilarious, dude. If you remember uh, Scotty Young. Uh, yeah. From, oh, yeah. The legendary Scotty Young. Yeah. Dude was yeah. putting like rubber core sinkers nah, in front of them. Get them down yeah. to 20 foot. Uh, basically, almost Carolina rigging and things. And yeah. now, well, they don't dive more than 15 foot. We're going to put them in the box. But they just... they. And this is no offense to Casey or, or striking or anybody, but man, in the last two three years on Miss Lake, they just don't eat a plug. I, they don't. I, they don't, man. Um, and they do. And same at, at Pickwick, you get moments, you know, kind of early in the year. Same at Gunnersville, but then they get off of it pretty quick. And uh, it's not like it used to be, but you can have you can still have some magical days with it. But yeah, I remember it being the deal, yes. the only thing, and it lasted till like the middle of July. No doubt. No doubt. And, and they kick uh, that current on, you better have a big plug. That's right, man. And that's and I'm I'm a plugger, dude. I love to freaking wind. I love it. And uh, a big crankbait bite to me is there's nothing more gratifying than seeing them down there, setting up on them. They're set up right. When that plug hits the bottom, it just freaking goes out of your hand. Dude, there's nothing better than that to me. Uh in and, uh, system. I always tell guys and my fishing partner, Jeff D. Few, and he did really good a few years ago, almost uh, won the Costa here. Well, I think he finished seventh or something, but, dude, he was on some big fish in practice. And when he, when I practiced with him and they eat that 10XD, I said, them boys better hope they don't uh, keep eating this because he is, in my opinion, I'm biased, he is the man, and he has figured out how to catch them when a lot of guys can't, but – Dude, we, when I was growing up from 19 to about 24, man, me and him, we would just go out there and poke around with the crankbait when a lot of guys put it down. And there's nothing that beats pulling up to that spot and making five casts. And there's, there's 24 pounds, just like No that. doubt. My, my and, dad and I, we learned to, uh, with DD-22s before we had, you know, 6XDs and the C20s and all this stuff that you could cast that would get down to deep. And before this was public knowledge, we figured out uh, long lining mm -hmm. just by playing around. And we had a spot on Wheeler that truly topped out in about 25 feet of water. And we could see them down there. And we thought they were bass. Dude, this was years ago. And we thought they were bass. And one day in the fall, which is kind of crazy, but one day in the fall, my dad and I, we were idling. I'm like, man, there's so many fish down there. And my dad's like, oh, I bet they're catfish or something. And he had a DD-22 on. He slung it out, and we trolled over it, and he called a seven-pounder. <laughs> and we're like, uh-oh. <laughs> we got to figure out how to, we can do this in tournament. And so we start. we would kill our trolling motor batteries, man, going from making a cast and going all the way a long ways away and then cranking that sucker in. And there were truly, there was, a, there was a morning. We caught 23 pounds. And the first five passes we made over this spot. Uh, the it, first time it, I ever did it was too, yeah. was actually at Lake Fort with the infamous Kelly Jordan over there. And, and we showed up early to film a, a Classic Patterns TV show. And a storm had just went through. And he said, you know, I think filming might be a wash. But uh, y'all want to go catch some fish? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm down. So I go out there. And 
He says, pick up that crankbait and throw it over there toward that tree. I said, okay. So I throw it. And he goes, now push the button. He said, okay. And he just takes off as fast as he can. He said, wait till the spool is almost empty. Then turn around and start reeling as fast as you can. And this was on like his old Mitchell or Abu Garcia 5500s. Yeah. And I'm just burning this crankbait, which is probably the equivalent of using like a seven to one now. And yeah. this freaking seven pounder hits it on the end. And I'm, those fish at fork are really, really mean. I don't think people yeah, understand dude. how hard those yeah. fish fight. And he's like, come on, you pansy, reel that thing in. <laughs> come on. And dude, my shoulder was like almost wore out. And I was like, do you do this all the time? He said, oh, it's the only way to fish a crankbait here. And then yeah, we end up filming the show and he's, and you find the videos on YouTube. He crushes them on a swim bait. And for back then, it was the Storm Wild Eye Shiner. That was the first uh, swim bait. That was the like one. Yeah, no doubt. People throw those on Same discount there. bins now. They're not cool enough. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, they, <laughs> they, better pick, they better pick them up. Got one question off Twitter up. real quick. This is a pretty cool question. It says, Luke, uh, to Luke Duncan, has he thought about what will be going through his head that Thursday morning takeoff, the first Thursday morning takeoff you'll miss? What will be going through your head when they Man, take off? At Raven? You? Yeah. Yeah. It'll definitely be a weird day. It'll be a weird, um, it'll be a weird week. You know, when all my buddies start driving down there, everybody calls everybody. It's, you know, we're all a bunch of truckers. So when you get on the road, we're all calling each other. It'll be strange. Um, but honestly, man, and this is just, this is just complete sincerity. I'll miss the people and I'll miss the fishing. I'll miss the competition, but I will not miss anything that's going on right now. The, the, the controversial stuff or being a part of the organization that, that is now FLW. Um, I won't miss that part, you know, right. but I, I'll definitely miss my buddies. And, uh, that'll probably be a pretty sad week around here. Uh, I'll be honest, but I'll, I'll be back, man. I'm, um, you know, with everything going on, going to be filming. It's like I said in my video announcement, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, y'all still going to have to put up with me and, uh, and things will change in 21. I, I'm, I'm sure I'll be, uh, I'll be fishing some tournaments. I'm going to fish some tournaments this year. I just got to, um, it'll probably be closer to home and, and, uh, you know, right now for me, the most important thing in life is, uh, is family. Okay. And, and, uh, I agree with that, you know, and it's always the most important thing in life, but right now, uh, this bunch of mine, we've taken some haymakers this fall. So, uh, 2020 is going to be about, uh, having fun and it's going to be about spending as much time with family as physically possible. And, uh, and making sure my boys get out on the water as much as they want to. And, and, uh, you know, and that's, that's what matters to me. So yeah, I'll miss it. But, uh, but I, I've got, I've got my priorities in line to say the least for this year. And, and, uh, we'll be back in 21 doing something. Right. We'll be yeah. Kicking around them old Bassmaster opens. And I thought about it for this year, you know, but I, I just kind of want the dust to settle on everything. I think bit. I might try to fish the BFLs as a co-angler if I can. I haven't done that in a long time. I, I saw my boat several years ago. Like I said, life happens. Got a little boy no on doubt. the way. Don't need to make no a boat doubt. payment. So no I, I, totally I did get a question, and I don't know much about this, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to because uh, this may be one of your deals. It says, ask for the scoop on the beef with Gerald Spore. Uh, uh, I saw something, yeah. but – that's not that's not really for me to and I don't want to put you on the spot. No, oh, you're not putting me on the spot. I, I'm uh, like I said, I you know I don't need a I didn't I never needed a fake Facebook to say anything because I'm normally just pretty good at, at getting my own self in trouble. But uh, now I covered this on my podcast. But man, there's a you know the the MLF angler, and it's not even a beef. I, I've known Gerald um, off and on for a long time. He had a TH sponsorship at one point, and then he didn't, and then he came back and. He's, you know, he's always thought real highly of himself and, and was never happy with any deals that TH extended his way. And I don't know if he dislikes me because of that or whatever. Um, but, you know, I, I would never claim to know him at all, really. I just, you know, we never, he was never a guy I talked to a whole bunch, but I never thought he was a bad guy or anything. And, uh, no, man, uh, the Major League Fishing guys, the ones that are really all in, and there are several that are and there are several that aren't that within the organization, they have a big group text, I guess, amongst the organization. Apparently, I was a topic of conversation yesterday because, you know, I challenge uh, them with my opinions. And 
he made and I, I threw it up on my Instagram. I had derogatory statement against me and, and said, you know, hey, if anybody on here is friends with him, let him know I said this. And so, um, within about thirty seconds, a good friend of mine did indeed let me know what he had said, and and I, you know, and I, and I posted it on social media. So right. as far as as far as as far as beef, there's no beef. I don't, I don't care. I, I did that because I'm not gonna let. I want fans to know. The dark side of everything that, that does go on, and that's why I aired out, you know, the things that Jim Wilburn did and tried to do to me by calling my bosses, you know, over a freaking four thousand view podcast I do in my garage. It's all it's all silly. And yeah, uh, I, to me, you know, if that if I'm bothering you, if I'm if, if what I'm saying is truly bothering you and your organization that bad, you need to look way deeper past me, and and you would agree with that. And a lot of the negativity that we see out of fans regarding what these guys have done. And, uh, you know, it ain't all roses, right? It's definitely not all roses. And so it's not just me. And, uh, and, and the famous statement that from some of those guys is that you're just a hater. If you don't like, it. well, no, that's not necessarily the case. Um, not saying what they're doing is right or wrong. I'm not, I just, you know, my opinions on certain things, I, I like to point it out, but no, there's no real beef there. And I, and I'll say this. So I called him out. Uh, Gerald told me I need to, you know, stop running my mouth. And uh, said I was defending him because I was talking about his league because, you know, it's like an us versus them mentality now in bass fishing, which is silly. Um, but he and I talked yesterday and I'm going to have him on this week and I'm going to have and I did a podcast talking about it and airing it out last night. It should be uploaded now. Hopefully if my Wi-Fi didn't cut off, uh, <laughs> it should be up now on the channel. But uh but I'm going to have him, and I'm actually uh, – I reached out to uh, – Tim Horton was upset about some of the things I said. Tim Horton's part of – I like old Timmy Horton. I, I like Tim. Tim and I go way back. He was upset as well. I reached out to Tim, and I'm like, hey, man, because uh, he had said some things in the group text. And I said, look, you know, if anybody from that, your organization wants to come on to my podcast – and I extended this invite to Jim Wilburn, and he, and he, and he declined it. And so if anybody wants to come on and talk about anything – I. I am trying for this show to not be biased. It's just coming across as right. such. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, I if will, I will accept say, the invite if you ever invite me. Just absolutely. So you know, well, dude, we, we need to do we need to do it. But I'm saying the you know don't don't bash it. And then if I say, dude, if you think what I'm saying is wrong and you disagree with it and you are actually in that organization. And you have facts that you want to lay out to the bass fishing public that do most definitely enjoy what I've got to say. Then by all means, come on and say it. Right. You know, yeah. that's what that that's and that offer goes to anybody with any organization. So uh, I think Tim's going to come on. He and I text back and forth last night and uh, and I told Spoyer, hey, and, and it was Gerald's idea. He goes, well, hey, won't you let me come on your podcast? We can talk about this on the air. Absolutely. Would yeah. love that because Gerald's been one of the most. Um, which is kind of funny to me. He's been one of the most outspoken guys. And Gerald was a guy that fished the tour and left the tour because the elite mm -hmm. series was the next best thing. And then he left that to go to BPT. And he was one of those guys. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this, that I felt like if you're assembling the best field of all time, like you've said, you invite David Dudley the first round before you invite him. David right. Dudley's all time leading money winner. You know what I mean? And, and that, yeah, and that's no that disrespect to Gerald no as a fisherman. Absolutely me. not. I, I've Absolutely went fishing not. with Gerald. I, I actually Gerald's know him fisherman. pretty Gerald's well. And I took uh, it, was, it was me. And this is a pretty motley crew here. Uh, it was me, Zach Burge, uh, Gerald, and Jordan Osborne went to Lake X. No, oh, God, and, you guys. Yeah. That was, and, a group. that was a crew there. And uh, me and Burge got beat. Uh, Actually, Burge got beat because I think I only caught one. And he caught the rest uh, on my home turf. He's dude. That <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. Burge is a very talented fisherman, man. No, he but, is. He's amazing. It, yeah, Zach's, but, a, Zach's, Zach's just an outdoorsman. Period, man. If he's, he he's, ever learned that deep uh, structure bite, and I think he's got it in him. And I know he hates Kentucky. Like he would be freaking unbelievable. But man, you give him a flipping stick or spinner bait or no, he's or trouble. a shallow crank bag or a frog. That dude's a hammer, but, uh, but Zach's a, Zach's super impressive. But sport sport is a good fisherman, man. I'm not taking anything from him. He's just not been in the sport very long. Right. It's kind know. of the same thing with FLW too. You know, it's just one of those. Why would you take these guys versus told, these guys? And absolutely, you know, the fact that Scott didn't get an invite right out of the giddy 
thrift, you know, which thrift ended up getting an invite, but, you know, like Andy did, but it was late in the game. But, and I feel the same thing about, you know, it's no disrespect. Jeff Sprague had an amazing year on the Bass Pro Tour, but you took Jeff Sprague out of FLW before you asked David Dudley? Like that, that you know, that's, that's disrespectful to Dudley. Um, and, and now he's getting his chance. And so all, all is right in the world, but, uh, but Dudley's so, going to, going to win one of those uh, things, dude. Yeah, some off the yeah. wall combination uh, of a weenie yeah. worm and drop yeah. shot. That you've never heard yeah, of. He's fixing to, dude, Dudley's fixing to wreck some heads over there. <laughs> he's, he's fixing to, uh, and I have a feeling thrifty, what thrifty kind of figures out the, uh, the format and, and how practice works and all that. You know, I think Thrift will absolutely uh, prove why he's one of the best in the world, too. Um, but, you know, like, like I said, there's no – I'm not not trying to disrespect Gerald in any way by saying that. Because there were several guys that got invites. Um, you know, some of the guys that turned them down in the Elite Series got invites over a David Dudley. You know, uh, and that just shows, too, and this is something I've talked about, but FLW was irrelevant to them right. until, they, until they needed it, you know. And, and that's, you know, that, that, that stung me, um, through that process because there were so many guys that were great anglers that could stand up against anybody that just didn't get a phone call from FLW. You know, I felt in fairness that it should have been like a 40, 40 split even, you know what I mean? Or or come up with a better ranking system than they did other than. We might be running over on time a little bit, but one thing I do want to hit on real quick. you're You're fine, brother. We, uh. We said we were going to do like 30 to 45 minutes, and here we are at 50 minutes, but that's all good. I, it, it's typical for me. I get going, diarrhea of the mouth. No, uh, what I was going to say is, you know, I, I haven't really talked about it, and I, I'm forgetting this is one of those no disrespect moments, but that the new national, what was it, national Pro- professional? National professional fishing league, yeah. So, uh, have you talked to any guys that are excited about fishing that or whatnot? I think it's a good no. idea. It, a little bit uh i do know some of the guys behind it and i think they they mean very well um but i don't know if the timing was perfect on that yeah um, I, here's the thing as long as there are people that want to be called pros there'll be people that are willing to throw up their money and fish and and like to fish for for a lot of money um i think people will get more excited about it as it Once gets closer, actual, yeah. As it gets closer and it's an actual thing. You know, right now, you know, my joke about it was, and, and this was not taking shots, but like, oh, you guys have a tournament trail. Well, guess what I do too. You know what I mean? Just because it was just uh. a press release. And until, the, you know, the first checks are written and that kind of thing. But I know they're working hard on it. Um, Al reached out to me about being on the podcast. I just haven't had him on yet. Because uh, like I said, it's so far away. I would love to hear his take just, on it, you know, closer to time. A lot, of, a lot of details aren't out about it yet. And I that, think that's, that's kind of, right. I that, talked that, to, uh, Brad Omega tackle. Who's a great dude. Uh, he yeah, is, yeah. He, he's a, he's a veteran. He's overseas all the time. A contractor, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's out there, uh, risking his life so we can go uh, bass fishing. And, uh, and so we can run our mouth about it and have, have exactly the freedom, of, freedom of speech. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a cool deal, but I've said this and you may can agree to disagree whether as long as guys are paying money to go fish a derby, it is legalized gambling. 100%. Oh, it's high stakes gambling. Yeah, it's high high stakes gambling. No, it's high stakes gambling. There's no difference. Uh, I lived between, it, you know. I mean, I can go down to the local casino at Harris Metropolis. I advise don't. They don't even give free drinks when you gamble. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I which is me, a key to gambling yes Let's just be honest <laughs> yeah it, it hurts sometimes uh, you, but no difference giving them 100 bucks and then go to my tuesday night tournament uh ran by mr ron lapping and uh that's right i mean my odds are probably actually better you know playing texas hold on than fishing these days no, and, and and that's something that i've talked about extensively that i applaud major league fishing for attempting is the no entry fee situation to try to make this a truer more professional sport i totally get what they're trying to do i worry that the size of our sport will keep that from being sustainable you know what i mean because you can't Mm -hmm. run the run the fan base off and you can't or, or divide the fan base and you can't divide the endemic sponsors the industry sponsors up and 
And, right. uh, you know, and keep expecting to be able to pay guys to pay out and pay employees without bringing anything in because that's just been the model. And the reason that's been the model is because, you know what, that's what's worked right. um, to, to make the business sustainable. So Yeah, I haven't been shy. I mean, I, I've been pretty pro MLF on some stuff, but there are some things I, I, I do disagree with. And, but the one thing I have always said is I, if, if I believe if you're a true pro and a professional, you should not have to pay to do your job. Uh, no, that's the number one thing that gets me. Yep. I mean, whether it's bass and I think eventually bass is going to have something similar, or maybe even the FLW tour, but I always say, but why can't you just be like sports? These guys are on contracts with certain teams, you know, the old school FLW Fuji teams and all that. And you yeah. say, hey, we're going to give you a boat and 50 grand. If you win, you know, you get 50% or whatever. And don't worry about it. You got enough to live on and, and have a little bit. Uh, but, you know, it's there's but a lot the, of things out there. The problem with that is that, you know, the non, it takes the non endemic sponsors to do that. And right. they've got to they got to get a return on their investment when they get FLW the was way. really the first to really play that non endemic. They were the kings, sponsor. yeah. They were the kings. Erwin Jacobs the, was the king of it, man. Non endemics, the jerseys, the rat boats, the flashy way in. Started it. Yeah, and man, they started and, it. And to be honest, there's a lot of people saying this ain't going to last. It ain't going to happen. And they lasted for a long time. They, you know, they but, did, but their their business model did have to change it, because those non endemics left. You know, right. Um, uh, and unfortunately, and I've talked about that too, they come and go because their marketing budgets change constantly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you think back, I mean, we've seen it even with like Chevrolet, how many times have they been in bass fishing and out of bass fishing over the years? I mean, tons between bass and FLW, you know, and, and let's be honest. I, I don't, I don't mean any hate to the hardcore bass fishermen out there and pro anglers, but dude, we are in the whole sports realm. No. Uh, we're kind of like below poker on the ESPN yeah, yeah. ratings. Of course, yeah. You go, to, on the you, radar, man. you go talk to somebody, yeah, I'm, I'm a pro bass fisherman. They're like, what do you eat them? Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, you, you, spend, you spend more time defending the sport and trying to explain the sport and promote yourself, you know, than you do actually just getting to show up and be, be yeah, a pro. But it's a, it, we're all a little caught up in how important we are, you know, in the overall scheme. I heard, I heard a guy one time. And this pertains to the marine industry, the boating industry. Um, but th this this number was just insane to me. But he said that basically um, the marine industry as a whole was like one sixteenth the size of the bubble gum industry. <laughs> yeah. <It's, laughs> I mean, really, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean to, to put it like chewing gum is is just this multi-billion dollar industry and you know boat sales is just a blip on the you know just a, a speck on the map you know you were you said something earlier and, and we got away from it and i and i know we got a wrap but i you said something about growing the sport and this is something I, I think people don't realize and i and i look at these numbers on an annual basis on a monthly basis just in, in boat sales and things and new boat registration this is what i need people to understand because right now we got new bass boat companies popping mm -hmm. up. You've got old bass boat companies. You've got different things. But this is what people need to understand. There were about 6,000 bass boats built in the United States last year. Okay. New, new registration bass boats. The year before, it was right at about 6,000. The year before that, it was right about 6,000. The year before that, it was right about 6,000. Yeah, they're all buying kayaks now. They got tired exactly. of boat payment. Absolutely. And so that fiberglass bass it's growing. It's huge. That's a, that's a huge segment that's growing. The aluminum boat market is mm -hmm. also growing at a rapid rate, but, but you got, but, but you got to think about the high end bass boats. That's what we use for tournaments. It's not growing guys. Mm -hmm. It's not growing. There's not going to be 10,000 built this year. We're just swapping dollars at this point. So we've got to figure out ways to, uh, to make that change, you know, and, uh, and so I applaud MLF for trying something different, but at the same time, I applaud YouTubers for growing the sport. Dude, let's uh, let, for let, let's let's sit on them real quick. Uh, do you consider me a YouTuber, or what am I? Just absolutely, yeah. You're a really? YouTuber, yeah, or just you're a, uh, YouTuber? a redneck with a got... live feature on their cell phone? Well, I think I think that's a, that's you and I both, buddy. We're just rednecks with uh, the ability to talk talk all this stuff. But I mean, you talk guys like Ben Milliken. And I know yeah. you just have been on, 
you talk about a guy like that with 300,000 subscribers, his passion for fishing bleeds through. Um, but, but these people are, you know, and, and love them or hate them. There are a lot of people that hate on them, but like the, the Guggen squad, um, mm-hmm. there are a lot of guys, Darian is fishing. Who's, you know, a terrible YouTuber, but he is, <laughs> he is a YouTuber. Uh, but they, it's it's this sport is evolving. But you look at what Scott Martin has done on YouTube, Brandon Polnick, uh, merging that B lap, that pro fishing lifestyle and the educational lifestyle, right? And letting people in behind the scenes, kinda. And and dude, we have seen a shift in this industry because five years ago, would you ever thought the Guggen Baits would be one of the biggest bait brands out there? Would you no. ever think that Six Cents would be one of the number one sellers on Tackle Warehouse? It's unreal. And dude, they are, sold out of like my you, color jank juice. That's, that's, inc- that's incredible, dude. It's incredible. Yeah, how's that happen? It, that's what I'm saying. It's it's so people are getting their information. They are starved for content, mm-hmm. and they are absolutely obsessed with this sport. And so they're getting it more from social media and YouTube than they ever do from a CBS Air and a Bass Pro Tour right. anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's I'll be in honest. In real time. I've hated on the Guggen Squad quite a bit. You can call me the hater. I, I have done it. Not as, you know, I, let me put it this way. I don't hate them as people or YouTubers or whatnot. My deal is the baits. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, be a little more original, guys, you know. But uh, it is what it is. And they're laughing at me going, yeah, dude, you're sitting in your freaking bait room. And we've got a free bait, freaking bait they're mansion. Driving their te- they're doing yeah. their Tesla. You know, yeah, we're making great. more this month than you're going to make yeah, all right. year. So, but really, uh, I and I'll give credit to B-Lat and Scott Martin. B-Lat saw it coming. So, I started yeah, my channel, did. and he would message me a little bit, and I, and I really liked his videos. And I was like, dude, yeah. you got some freaking good content. And he's like, my goal is to have, you know, 20,000 subscribers a year. Then he got it, and he's like, I think I can get 50. And he got it, and yeah. dude... He's, but he got a huge following of people. And when he goes to the tournament, dude, there's a lot of people who want to meet him. They love and he's him. A hammer. They love Brian. They love Brian, man. They love him. And and and, dude, even in my small corner of the internet, and what little I've done, I can say that I know how powerful the internet is, just from the little catchphrases and things that we throw out on low budget, different things. But people coming up to me at the classic, coming up to me at tournaments, throwing those things out there, kids coming up. You know, the Internet's a power, powerful thing. And, man, mm-hmm. I never won an FLW event. Never had a top ten as a pro. I'm very fine in saying that. I'm I never won a dollar, period. There, you know? And uh, I did okay. I was very inconsistent. Uh, can I catch a bass? Yeah, I can. I know how to catch a bass. Did I ever catch them at the right time? No. No, I didn't. Uh, was I super disappointed? You dang right. Did I have some long drive home from some event? Yep, yep. Uh, so nothing anybody can say about me is not something I've, I've already not said about myself. Did you have fun? I absolutely had fun, man. It's it was it was it was my childhood dream come true, getting to do it. You know, um, all of this going on right now is a bump in the road, and you know it's a it's a time for um, for kind of for clarity for me and and kind of a hard reset. So, uh-huh. um, but it but it but it was fun. But I I say that. Uh, you know, the sport is amazing, man. And at some point, it, and I understand that I talk the great divide in bass fishing all the time, just like you do. But at some point, we got to get over that. And we got to get back to the fact that uh, little green fish matter than all this bull crap. <laughs> More yeah, than I all mean, this bull crap. It, it, at the end of the day, I always say, I don't care what your fish, what tour, or whatever, just show me the freaking bait. I just want to know what you caught them on. That's it. Uh, and you, you know you're talking about uh, uh, how cool it is on the internet and and the things we say, dude. I went to the classic last year and randomly seen a guy wearing a shirt that said Jenks. You know, my, and it was my design, and I'm like, I run over there and I'm like, hey, nice shirt. And the guy's like, oh my gosh, bait man. You know, I, I I love it, blah blah. And I'm like, dude, I'm just I cannot believe that that. That took off. You can look up the hashtag Jank. It's everywhere. Kayak guys are saying it. Bass guys and Zona dropped it on Bass Live one time. I'm like, really? Just a little old bum redneck like me. Uh, it's, it's funny, dude. It's funny. And like you said, you got your bait boxes now. 
mm -hmm. colors. And, plug you know, for the bait man box. Yeah, no doubt. Plug for that bait man box. Go get it. Go get it for six cents. And and uh, but shout out to to somebody like Casey and Six Cents for being innovative and taking chances on guys like you and I. You know. Yeah. I mean, truly, and uh, letting our voice be heard and supporting what we do. Yeah, they've been Casey's been nothing, you know, you know, but good to me. And and I'll be honest, dude, I used his stuff for a long time, and he knew that. Me too. I'm still a Strike King guy. I throw a lot of freaking Strike King baits. Um, yeah. It's kind of like having a toolbox. You got your tools you really like, and then you got tools that you know that always work. And and some of them you grab on one day, some you grab the other. And uh, I, I'll give a shout-out to Strike King right now. They have – all those guys over there, Crispin, Mark Copley. Great uh, guys. Great guys. And they know what's going on with me at Six Cents, and – they're like, well, do you need anything? You know, I'll take care of it. Same here. And because yeah, they same know same I'm not going to BS the guy when he says, well, show me your favorite trailers on a jig. I'm not going to pull out all six cents trailers that, well, you know, rage crawl is good. A structure bug's good. And, you know, you can, and, and I think that's being authentic and that's, that's what people like to see. I'm not trying to shove, you know, a bandito bug down your throat all the time. Right? Well, that's what YouTube has done, man. It's made everybody have to be more authentic and it's what Bassmaster live has done and FLW live and MLF live. It, it shows you what people are actually using. It cut out the old pro fisherman speak of, you know, you got a zoom logo on your shirt. So you're automatically saying, yeah, zoom lizards, the best one ever at big salty chunk. <laughs> That's all I'm ever using, you know. That's all I ever use. I really you know, do think that's all all Gerald uses, though. It does. It's without a doubt all Gerald he, uses. He, the hey, big Gerald's a <laughs> dynamite lizard fisherman. He loves. He is. And a big salty chunk on a jig. And yeah. shout out to big salty chunks. If we're just yeah. throwing shout outs here. But at the same time, you know, you got guys throwing other trailers and things. But but that's but everything is exposed now, you know. And yeah. uh, when a pro and I says like, I caught him on an unnamed bladed jig. We all know what that was. I mean, of course, yeah. And so those days are over. Uh, the consumer, the the fishing fan, they're smarter than they've ever been. They keep up. They pay attention. They will call you out in a heartbeat. Hey, man, I thought you said you used Skeet Reese rod. Yeah, I do until I pick up that big crankbait rod or whatever, you know. Uh, uh, and and uh, it's it's more evident than ever that. You know, people are paying attention, man. So I, I meant to um, ask you this question earlier, and I totally forgot because I kind of recited what I was going to say, and uh, in classic Bateman form, I totally forgot. And this is the off off the subject. Who is the most intense fisherman on tour? Uh, on the FLW side, it does. Who? Yeah, or you could say general. FLW or in general. I have a underrated guy. I've always thought Skeet Reese was just intense you watch the old bassmaster videos and even at like clear lake the uh, my favorite term ever when kennedy smashed him on the huddle oh, yeah, awesome. dude he, yeah, skeet's always like if you call me a name one more time i'm gonna knock your block off that's just how he yeah. fishes yeah he's, he's a super intense dude super passionate about what he does and um, i love skeet great dude to oh, me i do too skeet has always been really good to me um Dude, I, I think, and, it, and this is an easy one, and it goes without it goes without saying. But I think, as far as being a fan of the sport, loves what he does, puts everything he has into it, and every minute it's, it's I can Ellie. He's the most intense guy from a business standpoint, from a fishing standpoint, from a tournament standpoint. He he's the most intense in the whole sport, I think. He's and and also, I feel like he's done as much for the sport as anybody. And I get to say this because I got to, and this is a dog on anybody because I've got to work with KVD and Gerald and Skeet and Kelly and a bunch of different guys. But dude, Ike is an easy dude to work with when you're filming a TV He's show. The best, man. Like I could say, Ike, go over your rod and reel setup and your jig. He goes, okay, got it. And I mean, rattles it off first take and just keeps on going like no big deal. Whereas, and, and Gerald will tell you, when he first started doing classic patterns, it was like, all right, Gerald, take one, take two, take three. All right, let's just uh, relax for a little bit. And we had to cut up a lot of interviews to make it sound real nice. But now, Gerald nails it, man. You say, hey, uh, let's go, Gerald. And tell me about uh, what we're fishing here. He's, he's a one-taker, man. Yeah, he's a one-taker. But sure. uh, that I, I miss that, man. I really do. Uh, and that's why I, I kind of like doing the YouTube is – Man, I learned a lot of stuff that never hit the TV uh, floor from 
from from those guys I, and I, i'd be staying after hours watching you know gerald and, and kelly the old lucky craft team and, and oh, stuff yeah, just, just talk for hours and that's kind of how a bait man happened you know I, i'll be honest uh fletcher shot rocks the one that gave me the bait man name so that's awesome Shout out to Fletch uh, for that. Uh, I know he's been the topic of a lot of. Yeah, Fletch throwing out some. He'll throw out some names now. (laughs) Hey, uh, you know what? I'll say this. Uh, uh, Dude owned it. So. uh, Absolutely, man. Put it out there. Uh, uh, Yeah, I said that, dude. I've said it. Look, I I talked about it on the podcast. It is what it is. But uh, uh, when he went on Ike Live and 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 he owned what he said and he stood by it that's way better than crawfishing on it in my opinion i mean yeah. I, I don't have to agree with what he said at all um in the least but that he stood by and i respect that hey um, and same token you know what gerald said in his text he owned it he said hey you tell him i said that by gosh someone didn't he's cool with it that's what he wanted to do that's so exactly right it, it just exactly kind of sucks right. sometimes yeah. because you know i really like everybody and I don't want to be pulled into a corner one way or other way. I don't want that line drawn saying, saying, you know, if you have Duncan on your podcast, we can't be friends. Or if you have yeah. Jimmy Houston on here, you have to get a haircut and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I just you have to shave. Yeah. Have I just want to be like, I'm kind of, I, when you're talking about podcasts, I watch Joe Rogan all the time. Some of the people he has on there, I have no idea who they are, right, but I exactly. like his thinking where he's not just, Hardcore down it. one line, except yeah, he eats a lot of meat. You know, he's very open to everything, but he also has his points of view and, and stuff he definitely uh, disagrees or agrees on, and that's okay. Um, but I will say, last thing before I get off here, we get off here is this is made for some great entertainment on Facebook. I, I saw a post the other day, and I wanted to reply to it. And, and they were talking about Bass MLF and said, well, Bass is just like football. The team that scores the most touchdowns win the game. And I'm like, <laughs> buddy, you, you you must not follow the Vols very much. That's not, <laughs> no, you don't follow the Vols. That's not how it works. <laughs> so, but uh, Luke, dude, we've been on for like an hour and 11 minutes. Uh, so we went way over our airtime. Uh, I think my wife is fixing to start the laundry. So I'm going to have to jump off here. Uh, but, uh, guys, uh, subscribe to Luke's channel. Uh, it's, uh, is it, uh, Luke Duncan's traveling circus? Yep. Traveling circus. And check out low budget live, uh, whether it's live or not so live, he's going to have a lot of guests and stuff on there. And, uh, maybe, uh, Lord willing, uh, I'll get to come on there one day. Maybe even I, I'll go well, down there. Happening. I might have to come down your way and, uh, and do some fishing. I don't, I don't we know. need to do that. We'll get you I on. really don't want to fish with fishing. Darian, so I no, would just. No, nobody wants to fish with Darian. His own wife does it. She tells me all the time. She's like, I hate having to fish with Darian. I hate having to live with him. Yeah. <laughs> I think, she tells me. I think most she people just want to see my son fish and just let me talk about baits. I don't know. He, he's that's getting that. That's that's awesome, man. Well, thanks for everything you do. Dude. Hey, no problem. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm uh, just old, old redneck. So. Uh, uh, I'm going to hit the stop recording button on this. All and, right, buddy. Uh, all right, y'all Luke, have you a, have a good have one. Merry Christmas up there in Kentucky. And I hey, you uh, too. too. Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I want to say thanks again to Luke Duncan for joining Bateman Raw. Absolute pleasure and very passionate uh, about his stances, whether you agree or not. Um, and that brings me to uh, a point whether it's a bait if it's if it's life in general uh if you got a stance make sure you stand up for it and don't let anyone get in your way and it's okay to have different opinions it's okay to beef with somebody uh you can ignore it uh you don't have to always hit it head on but uh, i respect the guys um that to stand up for what they believe in whether uh, you agree with it or not and uh, at the end of the day we're all just fishermen um we all enjoy catching a bass, even, except for smallmouth, because they really piss me off. Um, I like them, but they come off a lot. They cost me some money and some tournaments. Uh, but um, 
I want to thank all you guys for joining uh, Bateman Raw. I'm really excited to bring you this new podcast. And I think we've got some more guests uh, that are ready to roll on this thing. Um, I've reached out to a few guys at Fish Bassmaster, some major league fishing guys. And I just I just want to know about baits and life in general and, and different cool stuff. And Except for Darian. Uh, we're just messing with Darian Craig, by the way. He, he's a good dude. Um, even though Six Cents didn't send him any of the new color stuff and they sent it all to me and Ben. But um, I don't really have too much else to say after that. That was definitely a heater. Um, I hope you guys will share that. Um, share the Podbean podcast. Share the YouTube stream. Whatever you want to do. Don't really care. And make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you don't hit the thumbs up button, no big deal. I just will not be sending you a Christmas card. So thanks again, everybody, for joining Bait Man Raw. I'm going to see you again very soon.